and welcome to Cuesta Sports Monthly, an in-depth look at Cuesta Athletics. I'm Peter Schuler, and today we will meet with the two basketball Cuesta's two basketball teams and a local author, Del Franklin. First up, it's men's basketball here on Cuesta Sports Monthly, and I'm joined by sharpshooters Wani Dassey and Drew Ardowin. Wani, Drew, welcome to the show. Uh, you guys have made the playoffs, and you guys are having a great season so far. Both of you guys are right up there. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit. We'll start with the team. Team making the playoffs this year, kind of a big deal. Really came down to the wire. How are you guys feeling about going into the postseason this week? Uh, great, great. Uh, we, I mean, it's the goal. It's the goal of the season to get into the postseason and be able to go far uh, to get everybody uh, a good amount of exposure and be able to progress to the next level. So it's it's amazing to uh, be able to achieve that and and to help everybody progress. Yeah. Now th this this is your second year with the team. Last year, you guys actually finished higher in conference, mm -hmm. but this year, the, was conference just that much tougher this year, do you think? Uh, yes, I think uh, this year, the, the competition in the conference was uh, a lot higher. We, we had uh, tougher teams, uh, definitely, uh, compared to last year. Last year, we were able to kind of more cruise through the conference, and, uh, but this year, we, we started struggling a little bit as, as uh, you know, uh, from <laughs> you did have a step in this when you first began in the conference. You guys got, took a little bit of a slide there. Yeah, but yeah, but we were able to pick it up after the like the second half of the conference play, and and that got, that was enough to get us in. So yeah. that, was, that was good. Now, Drew, you you got had the red shirt last year, or yeah. decided the red shirt last year. I don't know the instant after that, but but uh, coming into this team now this year after seeing having a year watching, how did that make a develop, diff, difference for you developmental wise? Uh, well, I mean, I already knew all the offenses, and uh, I played in practice with a bunch of the guys, so we already had that, like, chemistry going. Um, yeah. Uh, so, now, coming from Atascadero, you're one of kind of like a, a few locals on the team here. Yeah. Uh, the difference going from people you've known in Atascadero all your life to coming to people from such a wide variety, uh, like Juan, he's from Argentina here. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what was that like? Is that kind of a big change for you? And how does that help your development seeing people from with games from all over the world um yeah it was it was like kind of a little bit getting used to but i think we we gelled pretty pretty easily quickly and it's cool like meeting all the different cultures and uh, personalities and styles of play that come together when we have like a team like this so yeah i think it helped help my game improve and everybody else's with it now you two guys are kind of Famous now. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> the, 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 the Splash Brothers stuff and all that stuff. Uh, you guys are one and two in the state for three pointers this year. Uh, still 24, point, 24 three pointers off the school record, but we'll get there. Um, so, but I just what, what's it like? You guys kind of talk about that. And just uh, <laughs> is there a rivalry between there? Is it, what's happening with the No, others? no, totally. No, no rivalry. Uh, no, no competition between us. It's uh, more uh, just helping each other achieve that goal and and do the best for the team and just taking advantage of the good moment that we are both having and trying to make the most of it yeah yeah i think we just take it game by game and uh mm -hmm. we just pretty much go, both got pretty close to 100 and then uh finished it last game <laughs> so yeah now playing for rusty blair who's a big man and and you usually you would, you would think a guy would like that would like enjoy playing a post offense but he's really let you guys fly he's really a big into that three-point shot he's a great shooter himself uh what's it like playing for rusty blair as a guy who's who <laughs> expects i know <laughs> the good stuff but uh you know uh a guy who has so much i mean he's the guy's one of the most knowledgeable coaches out there um he's coached at all levels he's played at all levels what's it like playing for a guy like that who's had so much success at so many different levels uh well it and, is and yeah. encourages you to shoot yeah, yeah, it is uh, definitely, it's been definitely a, a new experience. It, it's, it's been something something new. Um, when I first got here uh, to Cuesta, my, uh, I was playing more of an inside role. I was playing more uh, inside the paint, closer to the rim, but um, I've always preferred to being in the perimeter and shooting. And uh, after having conversations with Rusty and seeing the success that we started having, with me playing outside last year, um, I think he realized that um, it's 
it's more efficient and, and it works better for the team that we have today to have us uh, playing outside and taking a good amount of shots. So it's great that he has allowed it and it, it allowed us to reach that 100 threes milestone that we, we hit, yeah. yeah. So I mean, when you came in here, you're, you're listed as a forward. What was was your expectation, and was your previous game more inside the paint? Or? Uh, no, no. Uh, I was mostly a perimeter player. Okay. But um, last year, since we didn't have that much size, um, I was driven more towards the inside, and um, I was in charge of guarding the the paint of. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> So yeah, that was my job last year, and this year, fortunately, we had a couple more guys that could do that. So that also allowed me to move more to the three spot and, and be more in the perimeter. Now, Drew, you came came in this year, kind of you got to watch last year, which must have been pretty tough. That that, that was, you have all that time, but you stepped right in, right into the starting rotation, started. You know, how how was how was that for you? Just was that just something you expected of yourself to to play at this level, to do those things? I mean, right now you're leading leading the team with, in scoring after redshirting last year? Mm -hmm. I mean, I knew I could play at this level, um, working, like practicing every day. Um, and and it, just, it just happened. I just played game by game. And yeah, just now here we are. Um, yeah, the scoring just comes. <laughs> <laughs> when, when did you decide that you were going to be a basketball player? Was this something that, that kind of grew up in India? Or just... uh, I mean, I, I tried like a bunch of different sports, but I just found love in um, basketball and soccer. And then I just, continued with basketball um, as I got older and uh, yeah. Well, Wani, were you, were you inspired by any certain left-handed Argentinians that have played before you? Or? <laughs> uh, we, we can name one that is pretty well known. <laughs> that, um, one guy, uh, not very important, named Manu Ginobili. Yeah, yeah. He may have, may have had some, some little influence, but um, it was mostly uh, because of my dad. He played the sport and he introduced me to the sport and well, he's always been, uh, he's always had my back and he's always supported me. And uh, yeah, he's been great throughout the whole process. And he knows uh, how good I can be when, <laughs> when I play. And, and he always pushes me to be that guy. Well, he's got to be pretty proud of you you're, you right now. And uh, same with Drew's parents. You guys are coming up for your, your full season here. You know, what's your prediction kind of coming in here? What's your focus coming in for this last game? I'd say just take it a game at a time and uh, play as hard as we can and see what happens. All right, Wani, well, last word? Yeah, uh, yeah, more building on what he said, just not taking anything for granted and just playing hard and playing smart. I think that is, that's the key to beating every team because we, we have a pretty good squad here and we have a good chance. So. All right. Cougars back in the postseason. Thanks again to Wani Dassey and Drew Arleman. Good luck as they go on to the postseason. Up next on Quest of Sports Monthly, it's women's basketball when we return. We are back with Cuesta Sports Monthly and Women's Basketball. We are joined by all-conference sophomores, uh, Olivia Missler and Sam Watanabe. Olivia, Sam, welcome to Cuesta Sports Monthly. Thank you. Season just wrapped up. You guys both made all-conference this year, so that's pretty cool. Um, oh, you didn't know that yet? All right, that's, that's nice. Uh, how do you guys feel about the season, second season with the Cougars? You guys had some ups and downs, had a... An eligibility snafu that cost us a game. <laughs> How are you guys feeling about your year two years here, question? It was definitely a lot different than last year. Um, we had to adjust a little bit in the beginning, and I think we brought it together at the end as we started winning some games. But the first year was great. I loved it. This year was rough on, I think, a lot of players mentally, and we just, the team chemistry was never, it wasn't super tight. Um, but we persevered. Mm -hmm. Now, was that, was that a difference just between leadership or was that just, uh, just uh, different personalities completely? I think there's a lot of different personalities put together on the team. Um, 
yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of leadership. It seemed like the team was a little bit structured a little different last year. You guys are two terrific outside shooters, but the team didn't have the post players that we had last year. We didn't have the rebounding there. Mm-hmm. That made, made it a little, little bit different for you guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah. we definitely had a lot of people playing in unfamiliar roles, I would say. I think we were um, in our comfortable spots, but everybody else on the court had to fill in differently. So it looked a little bit rocky out there. But it seemed kind of like at the end, those last, last, that last couple of weeks, especially that last game, for, it seemed mm-hmm. we really kind of got in a rhythm, knocking down a lot of three-pointers. You guys had some great games. <laughs> Sydney Howe had a great game. I mean, everybody started started hitting those long, long bombs. Mm-hmm. And while you didn't have the inside presence, you had the, that kind of uh, ability to score lots of points in a hurry. For sure. So, what what, are the, what did you guys take from freshman year, sophomore year? What do you think Coach Blair's involvement in from year one to year two? I love Coach Blair. Um, I think he did an excellent job. I think this year is not a good representation of his ability to coach or our ability to play. I think he's an excellent coach and we just had to work through things that we didn't expect to work through this season. Um, And my leadership definitely had to grow from my freshman year here. I'm not used to yelling at people or getting on people or kind of, yeah, I'm not used to that. So I definitely had to step out of my comfort zone. So kind of leadership qualities are something you got to learn in basketball class this year. <laughs> that yes. Kind of, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's tough. I mean, we were talking about uh, the, the team chemistry and coming together. Uh, I think the starting group changed a lot of pieces from the first start of the season when you guys were 0 and 7 to when you came all the way back and you were, you know, basically 11 and 17 or something like that. Yeah. So I mean, you guys really changed. That was a 500 season after that original start. <laughs> yeah. So. What, what, was, what do you think was the key to that growth? I think it was there the whole time. I just think it took a while for it all to come together. Um, I think a lot of people were nervous. I was nervous. I think, yeah, I, it, we have the skill. It just, it never really came together until the end. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> no, okay, well, all right. I'm going to Sam, you just can't sit there and agree. You got to hey, give me a opinion here. Uh, <laughs> talk, talk about what was the thing that brought you to Cuesta College, and don't say a car. Uh, <laughs> what was the thing that, that, that really got you coming to Cuesta College to play, and what are the things that you're taking away from here that you, you found positive? Um, I've always loved playing basketball, so I didn't really want it to end after high school, and my plan was to go to Cuesta all along, so I was like, well, might as well sign up for the basketball class too, and then I met all these great people and so I wanted to play again this year. Now so. both both you guys kind of came into the program right after the pandemic. You guys got, got lost lost some seasons there in between. Mm-hmm. What what was the big change? What what did that mean getting basketball back after that? I coming out of high school, I swore never to pick up a ball again. And the day before Cuesta started, coach Casey texted me and asked if I would play and I was like I no I don't I don't want to and I really thought about it and I've loved basketball ever since I was little and I just on a whim decided to and it was a really good decision it was a really positive experience for me yeah especially coming out of the COVID season I think that took away a lot of um experiences that we would normally have it was our senior year so we didn't get to fully have a senior um, season, I guess. So I really appreciated my freshman year here and getting to um, get that back. So, yeah. So a positive experience for you all, <laughs> all the way around. Now, what about, you guys are done basketball here. Mm-hmm. What's your plans for next season academically, athletically? What, what, what's your plan? Sam got into Hawaii. Oh, yeah. All right. I got into a couple <laughs> colleges. That was, yeah. that was one of your, your schools, Hawaii, Monterey, and, yeah. or Bali. And so Hawaii's. So you going to try, try out with it for the Wahines? Oh, <laughs> don't know about that one. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I my plan is kind of up in the air right now. Um, I'm going to pursue trying to become a teacher and 
I might coach in the future. Who knows? We'll see. All right, so there's, a, there's still some basketball left mm -hmm. in you, huh? A little <laughs> bit, maybe. <laughs> How about you, Olivia? I don't know. I'm feeling like there's still some basketball <laughs> left in me, but I, who knows? Um, I applied to UCSB and Idaho, Boise State, and Montana State, and I think I'll either end up going to Boise State and maybe playing, I have no idea, or going to UCSB. All right, all right. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you guys both say you enjoy reading and stuff like that. Is there anything you really enjoy about reading? <laughs> Are you reading basketball books, bio biographies? What, what's uh, your thing? Oh, no. It's Fiction. Yeah. Fiction. <laughs> Mysteries. Yeah. Like Murder <laughs> mysteries. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, how about wor working out? What do, you, what do you guys do besides playing basketball? Um, we both lift, like <laughs> weight lift on the side. We bodybuilders. Yeah, we've been uh, getting back into that. We didn't get a chance to weight lift during the season this year, so that's something that we both really enjoy doing. So we've been slowly getting ourselves back into that. You guys are you now workout partners or no? <laughs> we should be. Yeah, we should. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll be, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so have have you have you been getting out for the latest swells and the winter swells here? And are you gonna drag her <laughs> out too? Um, uh, I don't know. You wanna go surfing sometime? I have no <laughs> idea how to surf. So no. We'll teach her in the summer, maybe. The waves are too big in the winter, so. All right. But, yeah. One last thing, just 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 to wrap it up. Women, quest of women's basketball. <laughs> it's kind of, you guys got it back on track after the pandemic and another new with and got Casey going mm -hmm. what do you think is is the best thing about Cuesta basketball and how how can uh, they get better in the future I think the best thing about Cuesta basketball is um, how many people it brings together and how you can meet so many new people like I met you and our friend Daisy through basketball and I never would have been able to meet them if I didn't come and play here so I appreciate how um, unified you can become well, through Quest of Basketball. Kind of says it all, huh? <laughs> all right. Sam Watanabe and Olivia Missler, thank you for joining us here on Quest of Sports Monthly. When we're back, we'll be meeting with Del Franklin, local author and writer. Cuesta.edu. Television, radio, broadcast, communication. Explore the world of digital communication and tap into your creative genius. Television, radio, broadcast, communication. This is your boy, the DUI, and you're listening to KGUR.org. Your digital future is at Cuesta College right now. Log on to cuesta.edu now for enrollment dates and class information. Don't get the boom in this <laughs> Blown it, bro! Cuesta.edu Welcome back to Cuesta Sports Monthly. We appreciate having local author and sports fan Del Franklin joining us here on Cuesta Sports Monthly. Dell, how you doing today? Doing good. <laughs> All right. Uh, you've, you're an author. You've had it. You've published a ma uh, weekly ma magazine. Published uh, the Rogue Voice for about four years. Yeah. And now you're working on a baseball book. The, the, the baseball book is completed. All right. And it's uh, it's going to be published by a small uh, small publishing house called Summer Games, and uh, sometime in the summer. So. You grew up, your dad played in the majors, played in the Pacific Coast League. Yeah. You were a baseball player for a long time. Yeah. What brought about this book having to be? Well, it's about growing up. The book is about the, the, the influence baseball had on me as, as just a little tiny kid, going into the clubhouse and dug out with my dad when he was still playing for the uh, Hollywood Stars in the old Pacific Coast League in 1951-52, and how I was indoctrinated into this culture. And uh, got my first glove there and my first ball and these professional players that were grounded in the, uh, in what you call the fundamentals and in the whole culture of baseball. Most of these guys grew up 
in the Depression, served in the war, and baseball was, it was a different mentality for baseball in that era. It was, it was like their religion. And that's how I was raised and I was taught how to play uh, from the ground up. So that time I was nine, 10 years old, I had all the, I had the fundamentals down and I was already a good ball player. You know, I had the, the good uh, genes from my dad who was a, you know, a big league ball the player. You talk about some of those opportunities you had yeah. being at the ballpark as a kid. It's kind of every yeah, kid's dream, right? Every kid's dream and, and the advantage I had all over these kids by being taught by big leaguers. And, and uh, actually playing pepper with him out in the outfield, learning how to field a ground ball, learning how to, how to handle a bat, playing, playing in the majors in Little League at nine because I was so far advanced. But accumulated with all that is a different kind of mentality where you're kind of an odd kid. You know, you're not a normal kid. You know, <laughs> you're a baseball taking, kid. There's something Yeah, something you're not different. taking music lessons or learning how to dance or <laughs> you're a nut, you know, and, and uh, it becomes an obsession, you know. And, uh, and, and so, and, all, and being around these guys, yeah. these guys were not like baseball players today. They were a different breed. They were a crusty bunch of men. You know, uh, like I said, they grew up. A lot of them were rural. Grew up in the depression, were, and uh, served in the war. Right. So, yeah. if you were a little kid, th this is what you knew. So, uh, so it's kind of it's kind of a, a homage to those guys who not only were tough baseball players, but because of the the com community they had. The experiences they had with yeah. the war, the depression, the toughness that, that they brought to the field right. and the changes. That, that in other words, had. if I went in there, if you want to hang out here as a kid, you better be able to adjust to us. Cause we're gonna, they call me little <laughs> They meat. didn't soften themselves for they you. They would say uh, things like, <laughs> hey, meat, you a lover or you a fighter? You're a lover boy. We hear you're a lover boy. And I say, no, I'm a fighter. And so this carried on into grammar school where I'd get in fights and it was quite obnoxious. You know, <laughs> arrogant, to say the least. But it's that it was the whole baseball culture that I soaked up. And later on, as a player, you 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 accumulate real instincts for the game, where other kids don't have. Even in high school, you know, you're you're doing stuff that nobody else knows about, running the bases, playing the hitters. You just seem to know all this because of, because of this osmosis of all this just sinking in, you know. Because when you're a kid, you can learn a language like that, right? Yeah. It's the same thing with this kind of thing, you know. And so this book, you kind of, kind of. The book talks about this. It goes all the way up through high school, where I was a prospect, where I had offers, and instead chose to go to college and realize that, you know, maybe there's a whole different world out there, you know. And, uh, <laughs> and I was completely closed off, 17 years. I, I was told by my English teacher in high school that I could actually write. It had a mind. It was just a bonehead jock, you know, anti-intellectual bonehead jock. And then by the time I got to college, I realized I was, you know, I, I started to veer towards writing and literature. Now this is this is your second book now. Yeah. So so you you got into literature. You guys got into to you you published the the Rogue Voice uh, newspaper. Yeah, and I've been writing for Cal Coast News for and four write, years. Writing for Cal Coast News. Yeah. So this so your I wrote last. For, I wrote for the New Times. Yeah. For about ten years. So this is your your kind of your second book. Yeah. And what what's the different process there from going from a book? Your first one is a memoir from, from your travels. Yeah. And then this one's now the baseball. What what's what's kind of the different step from going to writing an article, which is maybe a page or two, to writing a 200, 300 page novel? Uh, well, when you write a, like if I write something uh, for the New Times or whatever, it's usually about six, seven hundred words. So you just try to condense it. This is just, this covers, this book covers, uh, the River Bowl covered four months. This covers like, goes from like maybe seven, eight years old till I was 20. And then it goes, jumps to a epilogue later on in life, you know, what, what happens yeah. to me. And, uh, and so it's just, it's just like a project, you know. So, will this be a book, you know, coming out in spring or something like that? With, maybe with, the is summer. Is this a baseball fan book? It's a baseball fan's book and it's also a book for, for real baseball junkies in that there's all this inside stuff about about the old Pacific Coast League and about the ball players of that era. And, and besides my narrative, there's 19 vignettes in here, interspaced between my narrative that are like 500 words 
they're in my dad's voice. And so you get the idea that when I was a kid, I was pumping my dad nonstop for stories. And he would tell them over and over again, what about Ted Williams? What about Satchel Paige? What about Joe DiMaggio? Because that's what these stories are about, about all these greats. And, and then some of the really colorful minor league players that he played, a guy, like, a guy named Bear Tracks Greer and some of the real character. I mean, yeah. this was the era when there was real characters in baseball. So, so and not like today where it's all homogenized. So, it, we, you know, your, your dad played in the Pacific Coast League, but he also played for the Detroit Tigers back yeah. in the major league. He, he, played, but, but, he played in the bushes. So, so, so much, Cuba, Mexico. If, if, if you see the, see the writers, they, they, they all focus on the major league game and the major league yeah. clubs. The teams that were in the Pacific Coast League that had this, just as much talent as some of those teams, they did. They kind of fell off to the wayside. That wasn't a major league as, as much as, as the other groups. So is this so? This kind of brings back that Cal, the, the old yeah. Pacific Coast League. Well, the Pacific bit. Coast League was all we had on the West Coast, and it was the best. Other than the big leagues, it was the best league in baseball. Other, and it was way better than the, than the other Triple A leagues. And a lot of the guys didn't want to go back. They loved the West Coast. Yeah. And it was first class. They flew, and, and you know, it was Seattle, Portland, Sacramento, Oakland, San Francisco, San Diego, and L.A. and Hollywood, and and they loved it. The ballplayers. It was like this was when California was blooming, right? And it was yeah. this great place. And yeah, especially post-war, California was right. Yeah, a it, whole was, it was it was epitome of the middle class, you know. And, and I grew up in Compton, you know, and uh, most of the ballplayers lived in a regular neighborhood. So. So now that you got this under your, your, your belt, you've got your travels for the Mississippi after you got out of, out of the Army. Yeah. What, what's next on the horizon well, for you? Are you going to go on a book tour? This is the start of your book tour right oh, here. Oh, yeah, I will. <laughs> I, they're good. It depends what the publishing house does with me, you know, because they only do uh, baseball. It's, it's, ex it's exclusively baseball stories. All right. But uh, I already have a sequel, you know, so... All right. Who's your favorite baseball team? I don't have a favorite baseball ah, team. Ah, come on, it's the Red Sox. All right, that concludes today's edition of Quest of Sports Monthly. <laughs> I'd like to thank today's guest, Del Franklin, Sam Watanabe, Olivia Missler, Drew Arduin, and Wani Dazzy. Remember to stay up to date with your Cougars. Visit the Quest Athletic website for more information at questathletics.com. This show is produced at Quest of College by the Quest of Film, Television, and Electronic Media Department. I'm Peter Schuler. For all of us here at Quest of College, Thanks for your support of Quest Athletics, and see you next month on Quest of Sports Monthly.